Hello, my name is Jack. I am a student of English, and this is my story. I want to tell you about my life in London and about my fantastic teacher. You can read my story and learn English with me. It is a beautiful summer day, and I am traveling on a train. There are two ladies sitting opposite me. I don't know them, but from their conversation, I know they are foreigners. I don't understand much of what they are saying, but I know they speak English. I also want to speak English, but I am a beginner. I don't know many words. However, this is an opportunity for me to speak English. I decide to try to speak to the ladies. I say some sentences in my basic English, and they understand what I say. I don't know many words, and I speak slowly, but the ladies are kind and patient. I am able to have a simple conversation with them. I tell them that I want to learn English. They are happy when they hear that, and they tell me that they are from England. They are traveling home from a conference. We speak for about ten minutes. Then it's time for me to get off the train. While I am thanking them for speaking with me, they give me their address and phone number. They tell me I can visit them in England if I want to, and then we say goodbye. This is how my journey in learning English begins. After this meeting, I decide to work on my English skills more. I translate texts and watch films in English. I work on my English for two hours almost every day. In six months, I am able to speak quite well. It is great, but I want to know more. I decide to go to London to study English there. In London, I choose a school which I expect is good. I really look forward to my first lesson. The lesson is on Monday. On my first day at school, I meet my teacher and the other students in the class. My teacher is a young lady. She is very nice. She asks everybody to introduce themselves and say where they are from. Then the lesson starts. Our teacher asks us how we studied English before, and what we suppose is the best method to learn English. I tell my teacher that I like translating songs and other texts, but I don't know what the best method to learn English is. Our teacher says that she will teach us a very effective method, which is based on using the language. Our teacher tells us that we will not have to study and we will not use textbooks. We will immerse ourselves in the language. It is great for me since I don't like studying and I don't like textbooks. Then we speak about what we should focus on when we learn a new language. Our teacher tells us we need languages for communication. Languages help us say ideas and understand ideas. So when you learn a new language. The best way to learn is to use it for exchanging ideas. This is what we will do in our course. Most of the time, we will speak. You spoke a lot when you learned your native language as a child, and you should speak a lot when you learn English as an adult. Unfortunately. Many students spend a lot of time on memorizing new words or learning grammar rules. They don't use English for speaking. They study about the language, but they don't use it very much. Of course, you need to learn new words and new grammar, but you don't actually have to study them.
During this course, I will show you a very simple and effective way on how to learn new words and grammar. I like what our teacher says. Our lesson continues. We speak about our hobbies and what we do in our free time. We speak in pairs or with our teacher. It is great, and we speak for the entire lesson. I enjoy it so much. I have never spoken so much English during one lesson in my life. I have never learned this way before. I am happy and I look forward to the next lesson. I am happy and I look forward to the next lesson. How to learn words. I go to school on Tuesday again. One of the students asks a question that is interesting for me. She asks, What is the best way to learn new words? Our teacher says, There are many things you can do to learn new words. I will tell you what is statistically the most effective way for learning new words. It is reading. When people read, when they learn a new language, they learn twice as fast as people who don't read. It is good to read for at least 30 minutes every day. I want to show you what you should do if you want to get the maximum gains from reading. First, it is very important that the book or text which you read is interesting for you. It is important that you enjoy reading. The book can be a nice story, or it can have some useful information for your job or your hobby. Don't read a text that isn't interesting for you. It is also good to read a text in which you know most of the words. When you don't know many words, you can get frustrated. You always want to enjoy everything you do while using English. It is good to choose a text which is interesting and also suitable for your level. When you read the text and you see a word that you don't understand, you get a dictionary and you look up the word. Then you continue reading. You don't have to write the word anywhere. You don't have to make a list of new words. You don't have to try to remember the word. You only focus on understanding the text. When it is clear to you what the word means, you continue reading. Anytime there is a new word for you, you do the same. Reading also has another great advantage. When you read, you learn new words and you also learn how every word is connected to other words in the sentence. Then you can see how to link the words correctly. This way of learning new words is very effective. Give it a try, and you will see how fast you can learn new words. Then we continue with the lesson. We speak about the situation in England and about the best jobs for students. This is good for me because I want to have a job. I want to do something after my class. I ask other students if they know where I can find a job. They tell me that I should go to a job center. The job center offers a lot of jobs for students. This is good for me and I am happy that I know where I can find a job. When my day at school is finished, I go to the job center. I don't know what jobs I can do, so I ask the lady at the job center what the best job for a student is. The lady tells me that they have some good jobs for students. She tells me that I can be a cleaner or a waiter in a cafe. I tell the lady I have no experience doing these jobs. She tells me that my English is good enough to work at the cafe. The training is not difficult. 
and I can have more chances to speak English than being a cleaner. She tells me that I can start my job on Thursday. It is all good for me. I'm happy that I have a job where I can practice English. How to Learn Pronunciation On Wednesday, I go to school again. There is one student in the class who is quieter than the other students. He is from South Korea. When our teacher asks if we have any questions for her, this student from Korea says that he has a question. He says that he has a big problem with pronunciation. He knows that his pronunciation is not very good, but he doesn't know how to improve it. He doesn't speak much because he doesn't want others to listen to his bad pronunciation. He says that he reads and watches films in English a lot. He understands very well, but he also wants to improve his speaking. He asks if there is something he could do to improve his pronunciation. When my teacher hears this, she says, Okay, I will tell you something about pronunciation and how to practice it. I will also teach you a great technique that can help all of you to be better at pronunciation. First, we have to look at why students have problems with pronunciation. When we speak, we have to move our mouth. We have to use muscles in our mouth. We all do that. The problem is that when you speak English, sometimes you use your muscles the same way you would use them in your native language. Then, your pronunciation is different from the pronunciation of native speakers. This happens to many students who learn English. Almost everybody has a bit different pronunciation than they should have. In fact, it is not a big problem because usually people understand what you want to say even though your pronunciation is not perfect. However, you can work on your pronunciation and make it better. There is a great technique that can help you a lot. The name of this technique is shadowing. The technique is very simple. When you do shadowing, you simply copy the sound that you hear immediately after hearing it. When children learn their first language, they learn it by copying. They copy after their parents again and again until their pronunciation is perfect. You can learn English pronunciation in the same way. This is what you can do. Take some video or audio recording that is not very fast and that you understand very well. You listen and you copy what you hear when you hear it. That is all. Then our teacher goes to www.youtube.com and she searches for the shadowing technique. She finds a good video where the shadowing technique is well demonstrated. We watch the video. Then we all try to do shadowing for about three minutes. Then our teacher tells us, Shadowing is also good when you are preparing for a presentation you have to give in English and you want to have your pronunciation as close as possible to the pronunciation of native speakers. Before the presentation, you can go to some place where you are alone and you can do shadowing for about 10 minutes. You will see how much it will help you to have better pronunciation during the presentation. This is very interesting for me. I haven't heard about this technique before. When the lesson finishes, I go to the school reception. I ask the lady if there are any sport activities at school. I would like to play some sport in England. The lady at the reception says, 
Yes, we have a table tennis team and a football team. The football team has training today at five. I am very happy because sport is very important in my life. I go to the training of the football team. I meet a lot of players from different countries. The players are from Brazil, Japan, Russia, Spain, Argentina, and Italy. I like the training. I am very happy that my time in England starts well. I have a great teacher. I also have some new friends from my football team. Also, tomorrow I am starting my job. How to practice speaking. On Thursday, I go to school again. We have a new student in our class. Her name is Monica, and she is from Italy. At the beginning of the lesson, my teacher asks Monica some questions. My teacher knows Monica because Monica visited her class one year ago. It was a class for beginners, and it was only for two weeks during summer holiday. When Monica speaks, her English is beautiful, her pronunciation is very good, and she is very fluent. My teacher is very happy, and she tells Monica, Your school in Italy must be very good. Monica says, I don't go to any school. I learn English at home. I use techniques from you. I do a lot of reading, shadowing, and thinking aloud. I try to think more in English than in Italian. This is how I work on my English. The two weeks which I spent last summer at your class helped me a lot. You showed me the way. I know how to work on my English every day. This is why I wanted to go to your class again, because one year ago I was a beginner, and now I can speak English. I want to learn from you again. My teacher is very happy when she hears these words. She thanks Monica for her hard work. It is all very interesting for me. I already know about reading. I also know the shadowing technique. But Monica also speaks about thinking aloud. I don't know what it is. So I asked our teacher what is thinking aloud. Our teacher says it is a very effective technique. You have to have a strong motivation to learn English if you want to have benefit from this technique. It is also good to know that for some people, this technique is a little crazy. But when you start to think aloud, your English can be better very fast. I say I have a strong motivation. I don't care if the technique is crazy. If it helps, I want to learn it. Can you teach us this technique? Okay. It is actually very simple. You think in your native language all day, every day. It is normal. Now you can start to think in English. And when you start to think in English, then you can think aloud. You simply say aloud what you think. It is all. I say it is very simple. Why is it very effective? Our teacher says, maybe you can ask Monica. She uses this technique. Maybe she can tell you more about this technique. Then our teacher asks Monica if it is okay for her to speak about her experience with thinking aloud. It is no problem for Monica. She says, when I started with this technique, it wasn't easy. I started with very simple sentences. For example, I can speak English. It is good that I can speak English. I want to be better. I need to practice every day. 
I don't know many words, but I can use these words well. I can say my ideas with these words. I can do this. This is great. The sentences were really simple. But at the beginning, there was one problem. My thinking in Italian was long and complicated. I wasn't able to say in English exactly what I was saying in Italian. I needed to find a simpler form for English to think in. Simple English was the hardest part. But after some time, it was normal for me to think in English. Then something interesting happened. I met a man from Australia. He was on holiday in Italy. I was still a beginner. But we started to speak English. I could see that I was able to speak with him without big problems. My sentences were simple and short, but I was able to speak. I didn't translate in my head from Italian to English. After the meeting with the man from Australia, I started to use thinking aloud more. This technique helped me a lot with my speaking. I still use it every day. It is really a very effective technique. Our teacher thanks Monica for her experience with thinking aloud. I want to use this technique because I also want to be better at speaking. What you can do at your level. The next day at school, I tell my teacher about my experience with my boss and the two ladies who didn't speak English very well. Our teacher says, Great, your boss must be a very clever young lady. It is true that you can communicate with everybody. Even people who speak English very well can have a conversation with those who are just at the beginning of their journey. Today, we will speak about different levels of English and what you should be able to do at these levels. Let's start with the lowest level of 1,000 words. At this level, Students can speak about some basic things from everyday life. The speaking is very limited, but it is already possible to communicate slowly for a short time with people who want to speak with you. Your sentences are short. They have usually four words. If the others also speak in short sentences, you can have a basic conversation. When students move to a higher level, which is 2,000 words, the conversations are easier and the sentences are longer. This is the level most of you in this class are at right now. You should be able to speak about many things from your life. You can speak about your family, hobbies, job, and traveling. Sometimes you can have a problem when you want to go into a deeper conversation on some topics. However, this level is usually sufficient enough for everyday use of English. If you want to be able to have a deeper conversation on many topics, it is good to know 3,000 words. Your goal as a student of English who wants to be able to speak English well, should be to learn 3,000 words. Of course, you can learn more than 3,000 words. The more words you know, the easier it will be for you to communicate in English. But 3,000 words is the level which is usually enough for communicating in English about almost everything. I think that the two ladies at your cafe knew about 1,000 words. Your boss went to their level, and she had a basic conversation with them. After my school, I go to my work. The two ladies come to our cafe again. 
they also bring two of their friends. It is my turn to serve them. I speak to them in simple, short sentences. They understand me. This is great. They tell me that they are tourists from Japan. They tell me that they like our cafe because people understand them here. Lesson 14. What to do when you are shy. On Thursday, I go to school again. One student has a very interesting question. She says, I am very shy when I have to speak English. Can you help me to overcome my shyness? Our teacher says, It is true that when we use foreign languages, it is natural that we feel uncertain or shy. We are doing something which we are not perfect at. The possibility of making a mistake is great. I was also very shy when I learnt foreign languages. I remember well how I was afraid to make a mistake. When I made a mistake, I felt stupid and sometimes I blushed. Now, it is different. I use languages for communication. I care only about communication. You know that I am learning Spanish these days. Embarrassing situations can happen, but they can't stop me from using Spanish. It is true that sometimes I still feel shy when I have to speak Spanish. I also sometimes blush but I don't care much about it. It is a natural human feeling and it never lasts forever. I continue using Spanish because I know that only by using it, I can improve. I also try to see things as they are. I am a student, and I am on the way to good Spanish. It is not possible to skip several levels in one day. The beginner can't become a perfect speaker in one hour. I also see what I mean to people around me. When I already speak some Spanish, I have a value to people who speak Spanish. You should see the same. When you already speak some English, you can have a conversation with other people in English. That's great. Look at what you already know. You know 2,000 words. You have already gone from zero to 2,000 words. Appreciate it. Some students have a feeling that to know English means to be able to speak like a native speaker, to have perfect pronunciation, perfect grammar, and just speak perfectly without any mistakes. They think that if they are not doing that, then they don't know English. They are embarrassed because they are not perfect. These students are very hard on themselves, and it is not necessary. You are great because you already speak some English. Continue working on your English, and your shyness can gradually go away. I like what our teacher tells us. I am also sometimes shy. I know that I should practice speaking a lot, but in some situations, I don't want to look stupid, and I don't speak as much as I should. I decide to be a bit more brave in these situations and use them to practice more. Then one student says, Sometimes I want to say something, but I don't know the word which I want to say. Then I stop and I don't know what to do. In these situations, I feel very stupid. Then, the next time when I can speak English, I don't want to speak because I don't want to be in this stupid situation again. Can you help me with this? Our teacher says, When you start to speak English, 
you have to prepare for one thing. There will be moments when you don't know a word which you want to say. In such a situation, you will need to learn how to describe the word. This ability is very important when learning a new language. Since you are not a native English speaker, you will probably never know the same amount of words as you know in your native language. I can tell you that you can describe almost every word. You only need to train this skill. You will have to train how to express ideas within the vocabulary you have. For example, you don't know how to say the word key. You can describe it as a small thing for opening a door. You also describe words in your native language without realizing it. If you don't know the word for something, you just describe it to the other person so that he or she understands what it is. You can do the same thing in English, but you need to train this ability. Thinking aloud is a very good technique to use when you want to be able to describe well. Use thinking aloud every day, and your ability to describe things will improve. Who is talented? The next day is Friday, and I go to school again. I am happy that I go to this class not only because of our teacher. I like this class because there are students from many different countries in our class. Some students are from Europe. Some students are from South America. There is also one student from Japan and one from South Korea in my class. This is good for me because the students don't speak my native language. When I speak to them, I have to use only English. It is very good for my practice. Today we have another new student in our class. Her name is Evelyn. She is from Argentina. At the beginning of the lesson, Evelyn says that she thinks that she doesn't have a talent for student languages, but she wants to work hard to improve. My teacher asks her, Why do you think that you don't have a talent? She answers, I think that I don't have a talent because my sister learns English very fast, but for me it is difficult. Then our teacher asks everybody in the class, Do you think that you have a talent for learning languages? Please put your hand up if you believe that you have a talent. I look around the class and nobody puts their hands up. My teacher smiles. Then she says, Now, I want to tell you something. Many people think that you need to have a talent if you really want to learn a new language. I agree. Yes, you need to have talent if you want to learn a new language. But I also believe that you already have a talent for learning languages. Why do you have a talent? You have a talent because you already learnt one language, which is your native language. You were successful at learning your native language, and you speak that language fluently. All people who are able to learn their native language have a talent for learning languages. Why do many students believe that they are not talented? The reason is this. There are people who are super talented. Yes, it is true. These super talented people remember new words very fast and for a longer time. Maybe you know these people. Maybe it is somebody at your work or in your family. There are not many of these people, but they exist. I believe that this can be Evelyn's sister as well. Learning a new language is fun for these people, and they can do it easily. 
Evelyn says that it is true that her sister is really better than everybody else. Our teacher continues, It is true that these super-talented people exist. It is a fact, and we cannot do anything about it, and it is not a problem. The problem is that we compare ourselves to these people, and if we don't learn as fast as they do, we think that we are not talented. I want to ask you for one thing. Please do not compare yourself to these super-talented people. Yes, they are lucky and they have an advantage, but you can be lucky too, and you are super-talented at doing other things. Maybe you are more talented than others when you learn to sing, swim, play tennis, count numbers, cook or repair cars. People are not all the same. It is a beauty of this world. Now you can believe that you are also talented. Maybe not super talented, but talented. When you believe that you are talented, learning English will be easier for you. These words from our teacher are very helpful for us. I know that I am talented at playing football and tennis. Now I know that I am also talented at learning English. It is great. What is also great is that there is a school party in the evening. I really look forward to this party. I know that some girls from our class are going there. I hope that our new student Evelyn is also going to the party. I know Evelyn for only one day, but I like her a lot. On Monday, I go to school again. Our teacher asks us how Friday's school party was. One student says that the party was great. We had a lot of drinks and a lot of fun. The girls from our class enjoyed the party as well. I enjoyed the party a lot because Evelyn was there. I could talk to her, and we danced together. It was all very nice. There were also two boys from my football team at the party. These boys were from Brazil. Their English was simple. They could speak only in short sentences, but they were extremely funny at the party. They made a lot of jokes about life in England, about other players from our team, and about girls from their class. Everybody laughed. Their sentences were very short with only three or four words, but they were able to speak fluently. When we speak about the party, I tell my teacher, it was really interesting. 